Okay, guys, so we spoke about a lot of issues um, in the last 45 minutes, I believe. So let's start to put some action items together in place. So let me ask you guys, what can your churches or and our churches as a whole do to kind of rectify some of the issues that you guys face on a daily basis? It's like, um, like stuff like this is a great way for people to communicate because I have met a lot of people here and like, and it's people that I, I like to associate with and be friends with. So we should like start like activities and like go on trips and stuff like that, or go to places that we can all communicate, have fun together, get each other social media, and we can be friends. Like Tim here, like he's a cool guy. I like to talk to him. I got people struggles. I like to him like, more. Like he's the someone I like to meet and talk to sooner or later. And like we should do more activities like this so we can meet more people and go on trips and stuff like that. We can go to Six Flags or something like that. I don't know Six Flags. So Six Flags. I feel that uh, yeah, we can try to get if you guys have um, social medias because I mean I think it would be good that I think it would be better for us like if we could like get each other's like social medias, create a group chat, and if any time that one of us are having a problem, we can try we can go on um, that social network, put it out there with the in our group chat and say like yo I'm having a problem, then one of us then we can all just talk about it see how we can resolve it and um because like me i have instagram but i don't have a phone so i wouldn't be able to like go like regular texting so i mean okay and another issue i think we should put on the action items um you know i felt it was disturbing that some of the youth you know had no one to turn to when they had um situations so I think that's um, an area that you know we could try to resolve. I think one of the, uh, like a lot of the action items are good, like having a talk group. But there's some churches that have it. We have okay, we have youth group, we have Sunday school where they ask people to talk. So I think it's not just about having the forum to do it. It's like what do you want to get from it, and then what do you what what do you need us to do in order to better serve you? You know what I'm saying? Because you can have this event, and you can have this talk group, you can have all these different things, and they can come and there's still no talking. So what is it that you need in order to be better served? Or what is it that you want to get from, um, that you're not getting in other aspects of your life that you want to get from church, that you feel that you, that, that you feel that you need to get? And I guess I'm asking why you do, personally, just to know, because I think a lot of times, the, um, but the impression is that adults don't care or they don't want to hear, but I think it's that they don't know. And so instead of asking or trying to take the time, they're just thinking of something to do. Okay, we gotta do this, we gotta do that, we gotta keep them engaged, we have to find something for them to do. And then instead of taking the time to actually listen, or, or you just don't want to have silence. So we come up with all these different things to do instead of, you know. So what is it? You can have all the events you want, you can have all the trips you want, but what is it that you want to get from it, or what is it that you feel is missing? Uh -huh. I just want to say thank you to all of you guys who participated. You uh, made some really good points today. Um, to follow up with your question, I realize that a lot of times you can have these peer support groups, you can have these friends that you go to, but if they don't have the resources to help you, through it, then it makes no sense to just tell you what's going on. If you can't direct me to a counselor, if you can't direct me to a program, if you can't direct me to those resources that will further help me to get better or to help me with my situation, then it's like, I mean, it's great to have, but if there's no long-term connection where I know that eventually things may get better or change, then it's like, you know, what are we there for? So, in addition to having these things and having a welcoming environment for young people to sit around and talk amongst their peers, it should also be about connecting to resources. 
So if I disclose that I've been in a domestic violence situation for however long it is, and by the way, domestic violence isn't just male and female, it's also same gender, if you guys are, um, have to consider that as well. Um, but just to know how to connect with someone, that was all we do that. That brings up a good point. So one, like we're talking about serious things and the reality is that like your friends can be great to talk to um, for the majority of your problems, right? But sometimes you have to rec be able to realize or recognize that there are some things your friends or your family um, or people who aren't professionals can't solve. Um, and you, um, and that's one of the reasons that kind of being in relationship with adults is important. Um, having communities like church. I, I kind of think, when I think about youth groups, and I've done youth groups uh, for a few years now, and by no means would I say I'm like a great success at it, but, you know, the trouble is you do get into this mode of programming. It's like, oh, I'm going to have all these kids here, and they're going to hate it if I don't have something for them to do. So you come up with this programming, and then you get 45 minutes, an hour and a half, whatever. And that's all, and that's that's all of the relationship that you have with them, and they're out the door. Um, you know, that's not a good model. Like our model has to be community building. Like whatever we're doing has to be building the relationships that are fostering um, um, these kind of conversations. Um, in the the role of like a church community to provide that kind of space is incredible and profound um, and we should not we should not take it lightly how much we fail at it to be honest um, and and um, and how much we have to try harder um, but it's not easy and i don't you know i don't think there are easy answers to it and i have to say what you said both ladies just said is basically that it's on a cake for me. And I think in terms of resources for young people, one thing that we could probably organize is uh, if it's a physical crisis hotline. Okay, I'm not quite sure um, if they have one now. Maybe through the brotherhood, I'm not, I'm not quite certain. But a crisis hotline is something that all the teams can get a telephone number, it could be a Facebook page, it could be something, a, a messenger, any sort of social media outlet that you can call or you can text or you can you know, send a message through if you're in crisis or if you have a friend that's in crisis that someone will basically manage and get back to you. Um, it could be you know, somewhat private, but yet still, whenever there's a crisis and a crisis of, you know, it could be suicide or if you want to hurt yourself, that, you know, that becomes public because you can't keep that private. Um, but if you just need someone to talk to, I think a crisis hotline might be something for young people. And it could be um, basically uh, put together amongst all the churches that are here, so it's not just one, you know, one church to you know, having this big undertaking. You know, we're gonna have several therapists or counselors or just, um, you know, volunteers, man in line. We should also make like a, like, I think most of us have Facebook, right? No. If not, it's a big one. Um, <laughs> we can do like a web, not a web page, but like a, a Facebook group, like, like a group page where all of us who can name it youth, a physical book. I can't say that one. <laughs> um, a physical youth group. And then, like, when we have a problem, or like, oh, if someone needs an internship or something, maybe one of the adults, or it's kind of associated with the work of, um, in that area, and they can give you something, like, if we're in like, a time of trouble, or we need someone to talk to, just post on the group chat, and someone will talk about it, and stuff like that. If you need something or from somebody else, so can, like increase our network because what I learned a lot from one of my dad is that we need to increase our, net, our network. Our network, yeah, and then we so we can associate more people because the church is our, our house and we can get a lot of things from other people. Because, see, I'm into a country, but I know, I know somewhere here, somewhere, someone around here is someone associated with a company financially. I can talk to them about something 
and they can help me get an internship or something like that, so they can help me. So we should do that, because if we increase our network, our network will be, everybody will come here. Everyone here will become successful. All right. Okay, so I'll, I'll create the Facebook group, and just put your name, if your name is different on Facebook, I'll pass the sign sheet around again, and I'll add everyone that was here today to that group so we can start networking so we can actually put these actions in the Okay, um, I just had uh, two more comments about the action plan. Um, one would be mentorship. Um, because uh, the gentleman had a good um, idea because like a lot of the youth are going to be going to college and we have a lot of um, adults that are in these fields and to try to get them encouraged to be in part of the fields. We have lawyers, we have accountants, we have psychologists, we have administrators, we have a lot of different adults doing things and um, we want to encourage especially our young males to go to college because um, it's a ticket out. You know, I think without a college education you really don't have many opportunities. So if we as a church family can help encourage the youth to go to college and try to correct, uh, pick a career path, you know, that will be helpful because um, from what I heard that sometimes guidance counselors are not that helpful, so we as a church family can be helpful in terms of trying to steer the youth in the right uh, direction for college. Just one quick thing, uh, obviously I'm on the staff at the Bishop of the Diocese of Canada Myra. Uh, we've, we helped support this event, so you know, we're not a like a distant group. Like, if you want help, if you want resources, if you just want to talk individually or as a church, we're a resource. And, and definitely, um, myself and Ken and Myra are like 100% behind whatever you want to do. So, oh, um, on next weekend we'll be doing um, a high school retreat um, based around the theme of identity. A lot of um, the youth commission, uh, which involved Lynn and Mel Juan um, and others, um, helped us kind of form that idea. You're, oh, Zachary, yeah. Um, there's still some room, so if you want, uh, feel free to talk to me. Um, and then other than that, we have uh, the baccalaureate service, so if you or anyone you know graduating, that's happening towards the end of May, um, and then we kind of go into break in summer, so. Okay, so we want to start to wrap it up so um, we all can get down for lunch. Um, so I want to thank all the youth who are participating in this endeavor. And uh, thanks for having us. And um, I really enjoyed being part of the panel. And um, I hope you guys enjoy lunch and then we'll have part two of the discussion. Thank you all.